What's up, champ? Hey, hey, hey. What's up, legend? How you doing, brother? I'm fine, sir. Beautiful, good, beautiful. Good to see you, man. Where, where are you at right now? Where, where in the country? I'm at home in Detroit. Where you guys at? I'm, I'm in Brooklyn. Right. I'm in Los Angeles. All right. Yeah, man. Thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate so, you guys having me. Of course, man. Of course. We're, we're honored. Um, so let me ask you a question, Tommy. What was your amateur background like? How many amateur fights did you have? I had 167 amateur background. Woo! Cool. Yeah. 160. That wow, wow. That's a lot, man. When you were when you were doing amateurs, were there headgears or no headgear? <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time. Half and half. Yeah, I remember that. Look, let me shout out. What's up, Lennox Lewis is in the house. Hey, Lennox. How you doing, Lennox? Hey, Jeremy. Say yeah. Hello. That's a great dude. I've always said that. He's a very. We sparred back in the day when he was fighting Holyfield. Dude, it really treated me with a lot of respect. And I have nothing but the, the greatest things to say about Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis is a great man. I, I love him, Lennox. He's a good boy, good man, for sure. He trained Detroit with me a couple of times, so I know. Yeah, we, okay. Yeah, we, we'd love to have you on the show as well, Lennox. Uh, please follow us and let's make it happen, man. You and Jeremy could talk about the old sparring days. So, so you had 168 amateur fights. Do you remember your record, Tommy? Uh, uh, 167, I think it was, um, I think I had 167, I lost, I think, six, six, seven, I think, so it was about, I won about 160 of them. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful, man. I, uh, my, my amateur record is really, really big like that as well, and I get the numbers off too, man, it's so, the, don't be... Yeah. Yeah. It's been so long since my amateur career. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about it, man. I, I forgot what I did, amateur. <laughs> I forgot what I did the day before, let alone my amateur career. Yes. Hey, it's uh, all, it's good. <clears throat> was Daniel Stewart your first trainer, or did you train with somebody else first? As an amateur, I trained somebody else first. And what? what, what was well, my my later my later years uh, as a, as an amateur, I went over to Emmanuel Stewart's place to cross yeah. and asked um, Emmanuel Stewart to be my trainer there. And then Emmanuel Stewart accepted me, and then if they have that. So, uh, what are you? You're six two, six three. How tall are you? Six two. Six two, and you were fighting 120, 119. How, how much did you fight? Because you've been tall your whole life, every day I've seen you. I fought, I fought uh, 120, 120 pounds, 20 pounds. I fought 130 pounds, 40 wow. pounds. Oh, yeah. it's, it's like, dude, you're, uh, I mean, that that is, at that height, fighting 120, 130, 140, oh, my God. I was about 5, five 9, 5, 10, wow. five, 11. That's what time, let, let me ask, um, what weight throughout your pro career did you feel the most comfortable at? Like, where do you think you had the most power? Everything was just the sharpest. Well, my heaviest. <laughs> and about 175, 180, I felt. <clears throat> wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so your first title was against Pepino Cuevos, is that correct? Pepino Cuevos, yeah. Pepino Cuevos. And so that was your first championship, right? And everybody knows that I think you were the first person, and for people watching who don't know, you're the first man to ever win uh, championships in four different weight classes. Yes, sir. Um, of all of your victories, what would you say was your most, like, gratifying, like, the sweetest victory? Oh, against Ray Leonard. Yeah. I always say against Ray Leonard because Ray Leonard gave me the best fight. I, I mean, I got... More out of fighting Ray Leonard than fighting anybody else. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Even for training, even for, for training, I got more out of being trained and, and getting prepared for Ray Leonard than I, got, than I did anybody else. Uh huh. Uh huh. Twice. Okay. Before twice. Yeah. We, yeah. I remember watching yeah. both of those as a kid, and 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 you were billed as the villain, and Ray was billed as. 
the, the superhero. But to me, that fight was was about two guys evenly matched. But I was like 10, 12 years old. But still, like, <clears throat> the way it, it came off in my memories is that you were the villain and he was the superhero. But he was sorry, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, of all your fights, who would you say gave you the most trouble? The most trouble? Yeah. I don't know. I think the most, I really don't, I really didn't have very much trouble with everybody else. The, the biggest fight was probably just the fight with me and Ray. Me and Ray had the biggest fight, and we, we, we showed him. We did the most damage in the fight with me and Ray than we did with anybody else. Mm -hmm. that, that, that fight to me was, in my head, the, the biggest event in my life when the fight came off when I was a kid. I thought that that was, because I've been boxing since I was six, seven years old. So that fight was like, it, it was like Superman fighting Batman, you know? Like, it was just the biggest thing ever I could see, you know what I mean? It was that exciting. It was, a, it, was, it was a great fight, but I have to give them, I have to give a little respect for the where respect is due <clears throat> to Marvin Hagner because Marvin Hagner gave me a great fight. Marvin yeah. Hagner gave me a great fight. I mean, I really, I had a, a fantastic fight with Marvin, so I have, to, I have to give him respect because he gave me the best fight I had all the guys I fought. Did, did, did. Marvin Hagler punch harder than Roberto Duran? Did what? Did Marvin Hagler punch did, harder than did, Roberto Duran? I, yeah. I saw well, him. I'm just asking your opinion. Yeah, Mar Marvin Hagler was a different class than, than Roberto Duran. Oh, okay. I, so, I mean, so you would say that, that Hagler was the hardest puncher you've been against? I think Marvin was a hard puncher, yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. I mean, you know, that, that, that's, you know, that was, um, you know, this, but a legendary fight, you know, some people call that the greatest, whatever it was, four rounds in history. Um, yeah. w when you went into that fight, being that you're a taller guy, what was your initial plan to box or did you just want to bang out from the beginning? Initial plan was to box. Always to box. Box first. Don't change nothing up because what you, what you're good at boxing. And when, when I had to change my plans, like it threw me off because I was never re really to go out there and slug with nobody. I'm always gonna go out there and box you first. If it leads us to slugging, then we'll change it up. But otherwise, just boxing first. Wow. Sure. So what? So what changed your game plan? Just Marvin just coming at you, putting on so much pressure. Marvin just came straight at me. It just came straight at me. And when he came straight at me, it made me change the plan. Because I, I can't I can't box you, you all up in my face. If you all if you all for me, I can box you. But you all in my face, I gotta let you I got let I gotta let some shots go. Mm. Okay. And okay. so in in that fight, <clears throat> in round one, and you you you're seeing that the fight's not going the way you want you, you expected it to go. What part what made you decide to to jump into just fighting? Rather than you know doing it, um, you know strategically. Well, I always see one way of getting him off, making him step back, and to show him how hard I can punch. When I when I was able to punch and hit him, and he felt the, the power, he backed up some. But when I wasn't, when I wasn't punching him, he came forward. So mm -hmm. I know, I know when I punch you, I know when I hit you, you're gonna back off. You gotta. Yeah. Back so I, right. I, my mind, in my mind, was just just keep trying to hit you. Punch. The more I hit you, the more I hurt my hand. The more I hurt my hand, the more I, uh, I backed off. You hurt your hand because it's hard. It hurt your hand because you've been working so hard. I hurt my hand because I, I hit him so hard. Mm. Well, I, I I too have had that feeling, man. Where you hit somebody in your hand, just feels numb. And then, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. It's, it's just. It's just uh, my, my, when I hit him, after hitting him all them times, I broke my hand. Mm. I had to go through it because there was nothing else that I could do. Uh, oh. I gave him all my best. And the best thing was just 
It's trying to keep him off, right? Like, trying to keep him off as much as possible. Can. Oh, so you're saying that in the Hagler fight, you actually broke your hand? Oh, yeah, I broke my hand. Your right hand or your left hand? In my right hand. But that's not that's not the reason why I lost. He was a better fighter than I was that night. No, and, and that you know that happens. Maybe the next night you're gonna beat him. I, we understand that. I mean, uh, me being a mark on being you know being we understand like everybody every night's not the best night. And the and your fights go the way that night takes it. You know, it's not it's not it, it's your decision. But then also you know what I mean like intangible things you can you can't change. Right. So so, so speaking of that, is there, is there anybody that you wanted to fight again that you never got the chance to? Was Hagler one of them? Is there somebody else? Hagler was one of them, and uh, there's not not many fight, guys that want to fight again that I fought. Most guys wouldn't fight me again after fight me once. Mm. Did you find it hard at that lower weight when you were down at at thirty and forty and maybe even fifty? Yeah, I fight. Because you're so tall, people don't want to fight you. Well, what was the question? Yeah, here. Did you did you feel at the lower weights at like thirty, forty, and fifty that people didn't want to fight you because you're so tall? Well, I got a little bit of that, but you know, a lot a lot of guys didn't fall in front because of, because of, because of the, the size and because of the jab. The jab was so so was so long, so came at a certain distance they couldn't get, get they couldn't get to really hit me. So. They won't they want to go through that. No, I wouldn't either. I get yeah. it. Um, I was watching, there's this video of you uh, moving around with Muhammad Ali. Yeah. And uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but it, was, it looked to me like you were really going at him. Am I, am I wrong? No, I was, me and my, me and my Ali just were playing around each other, just messing around. We weren't trying to do nothing serious at all. Wow. I'd hate to see you be serious then because you were throwing some, <laughs> some fire at him. Well, he he knows our plan. I knew he was playing. He, he he's not a guy that you, that you um that you can um go in and try to do something hurt hurt because if you go in and try to hurt him. He he definitely has ability to put your player in the right place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean that that was one of our greatest greatest fighters ever. So I get it. I get it. What um, uh, Trey, Trey Ali was a was a lot, man. And, I mean, it really, really taught me a whole lot because these some things I took for granted. When I fought one more Trey Riley, I know that I must not never do that in a real fight because uh -huh. I can really get hurt. But I, Ali showed me that. I'm glad I had a chance to learn at an early stage with Ali and get learn in the ring with some tough fighter. Right, right. Wow. Um. I was talking with your son, and I heard that the one fighter that you always wanted to fight, but you never got the chance to, was Roy Jones. Is that true? Yeah, I thought about Roy Jones because I wanted to show Roy Jones is an excellent fighter. Yeah, and I wanted to show people that two excellent fighters together can can can, can actually fight each other and not really raise a whole lot of noise. But we can prove to people that you, you have great, great talent. You right. Have great talent. And that's what I wanted to show. Oh, oh, do you remember around what year this was that you were that you had that interest? Mm, it's probably like in the nine, two, late, the late, late, the late, the late nine, early two thousand. Um, was was there anybody else in your career that you really wish you would have fought, but you never got the chance to? Nah, I fought most of the guys anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like uh, Emmanuel Stewart was an intricate part of your 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 rise in your career. Emmanuel was definitely one of the main reasons why my career was the way it went. Because Emmanuel Stewart was there for me. He was there to to give me red and pick the right guys for me to fight with. Right, it's definitely a skill to bring a fighter from zero to hero. I completely understand that for sure. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, I say I'm a hero. Say it again. You said I'm a hero. I said no. I said I completely understand what it takes to bring a fighter from zero to hero. So what that mean? Hero just means great fighter. Hero just means good. <laughs> just a great fighter. <laughs>
You know, don't be messing with me, well, Mister. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very well, dude. You are you are a legend. You are a legend to me. Thank and you. I, I started yeah. when I was eight years old. I'm 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 fifty next year. Okay. Won a couple of championships. I I I fought at a, I fought at a, the, I, I trained with Manu Stewart at, at Cronk. So I I know where you are. Obercar is a good what's friend. Your, what's, your, what's your name? Jeremy Williams. Jeremy Williams. Was you there when I was there? No, I was there after you. I was there with um, Michael Moore, Obercar, Leandro Barber, uh, Dennis Andreas, with those guys. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, he was he was a little a little later, but um. So I I had read that y your mother was a fight promoter. Is that true? My mother, she did a little bit of it. Just just very very little. Just a little. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I read, I read that. I was like that. That was that was real really interesting. Um. Uh. What do you think about today's uh fighters about? The, the whole YouTube fighters, uh, you know, taking over the sport. Do you think that's good for the sport, or do you think it's kind of corny? Well, I really can't elaborate on that very much because I'm not – YouTube and fighting is totally different for me. I, I mean, I be, I'm used to doing all the fighting myself, but when they bring YouTube involved and let, let, let them be a part of fighting, I – I really don't know what what good would do and what good what, what bad thing would do. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah. I, I, I don't want to talk against it because I'm not really upon it as much. Right, right. I, I, I can I, tell you if right now in the in in the interview, if you were 26, 28 years old, who would you fight right now? What fight would you like to take? Good question. 26, 28 years old. If you were like 26, 27, whatever your prime, the meat of your career, like where you felt the, the best at 60, at 70, 50, whatever it is, who would you want to fight and, and just grind? Any, any, anybody that would make sense for me to fight. Because, you know, my, my ability to do to, to, to the fight game, the way I wanted to go through the fight game, and I had no fear of nobody. And, and today, it's still the same. I have no fear of the fighter. Now, I, mean, I, I know they may be good, but I think I'm better. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. I saw recently a video of, of Sugar Ray Leonard finally admitting to you that you won that fight. Well, me and Ray, me and Ray go back and forth with each other because we say, I beat you here, I beat you there. And Ray say, well, I beat you. So, but you know, one thing I can say about me and Ray, we're very cool with each other. We we love each other. And we know what we did for each other. We made each other a lot of money, so we're very happy. And nothing what? wrong. With that. Nothing wrong with that. Ray, Ray, I've met Ray a few dozen times. I've sat with him. I've had a conversation. Had dinner with him. He's a really good dude, and uh, I have <clears throat> I have nothing but the highest respect for him and you. So, yeah, of course. I mean, you guys are both legends. Um. So on the other end of that, though, was there ever a fighter that really got under your skin that you did not like that you fought? Nah, I don't let that. I don't let that happen too much. I don't, I don't go for that too much. Okay. Did you? Did you? Did you feel the right hand that you knocked Roberto Duran out with? Did I feel it? Yeah. I think I shot it. I know you shot it, but <laughs> man, I was watching that uh, 150 times today. Good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes you know, it, it makes you think. It makes you think, wonder, man, is there a lot of power behind you? And you, and you know, while you shoot a pop with a shot, and you know you put your your hip into it, there's a lot of power behind it. Mm -hmm. So I, when I hit you, I know it'd be a lot of power behind my punch because I, I I use my whole hip, my, my whole right side, going into your body, going to wherever I'm trying to hit you with. Um, wow, man. What, what, so what got you into boxing? Like when you were younger, did you get in fights a lot or what, what, what led you to that path? I wanted to be protection for my brothers and sisters. I was, I was an old boy. I wanted to, a way to learn how to fight a little bit so I could help protect my brothers and sisters from bullies in the street. I mean, oh. this, 
Detroit, correct? Harry? Is this this is in Detroit or some other little city? In Detroit. You live what part of Detroit? I, I lived in on the east side of Detroit when I was younger, but I live in Southfield now of Detroit. And you were you were born in Tennessee, right? And then moved to Detroit when you were young? Right, right. I moved to Detroit when I was very young, about five, six years old. Wow. Um so at what age did you start seeing that you had that that serious power? When that was that instant, or did it develop? I had to develop it. It was something I had to develop. Um, after many years of training in boxing, I, I developed the, the, the ability to punch too, as well as learn how to, to box and learn to, to to protect myself. During during the whole stage, I learned how to protect myself. I learned how to really fight. Mm. You did. Question: Do you you uh, you go in the gym and break a sweat these days or no? Um, my mind and so my so and and shot and shot right now. So I really stay in shape. Try to stay in the gym and stay sharp and in and, and shape because I I think about boxing all the time and and uh, you might be you might even be surprised because you may see me. Again, uh, in the boxing world, because I feel like everything is, you know, my, my tools are still there. It's got to be sharpened up. And once I sharpen them up, then I'll be, I'm going to be all right. Wow. Anybody who think they want a piece, better think <laughs> twice. Oh, shit. Um, so, not including yourself. Who are your top three greatest fighters of all time? First of all, the front number one, Muhammad Ali. I agree. I agree. After Muhammad Ali, I'd say, I'd say four, four Patterson. Oh, okay. I'd say, I'd say, uh, and I'd say Marvin Hagler. Wow. Four, Dude, four, four, King. Those are the four kings. You got to put the four kings in there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You cannot get a better group of fighters than that. That's very, very, very honorable of you. That that was, you know, that was a great era because obviously now there's so many things that stop the best to fight the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when you did it, you know, you you guys showed that you just wanted the fight. You made the fights. I mean, what do you think? the differences between then and now? You think it's the promoters getting in the way or what? Um, that, can be, that can be a big part of it, that the promoter is not being involved the way it should be involved to make it happen. Uh, and then again, it can be the fighters too. The fighters got a lot to do with it too as well. Mm. So, so you a little bit of both. Do yeah. you think nowadays... Money stops a lot of fights from happening. Always have. Always has, huh? Always have. Mm. Money, yeah. money, outside, money outside starts a fight. You have no money, you don't get no fight. Yeah, well, what's the biggest fight that never happened for you? No, not that I know about. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody wanted to fight, like, man. They just... I thought everybody wanted to fight. You know, and, and that that is to be to be to be spoken for because nowadays there's so much junk in between A and B just going at it. Mm -hmm. So much stuff that people would say like, "Well, my, my I, always, I, if you want me, you can have me. But what you gonna do with me when you get me?" <laughs> exactly. What? Well, um, who would you say of all the people you fought? ended up being, you ended up having the easiest time with that you didn't expect to? I can't say, I can't say there was no one back there. Nobody? No. No, so you, no one right You expected to, to handle Duran that easily? I, I, did, I, expected, I expected to go in there and, and, and fight with Duran and do a good job, but I didn't expect, I, I didn't expect to be able to handle him just so easy as I did. Okay, so there's a question that I just read. What about Aaron Pryor? What yeah. You never fought him? You fought him? What happened? I fought him one time, and me and Aaron, I think we fought him to a draw. 
But Empire was a, a good fight. And I, I wish I would have met Empire as a pro. It would have been totally different. Oh, you, you fought him as amateur? As amateur. Wow. 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 Aaron, you and Empire, how many times do you guys fight? Because I know you guys once from Ohio, once from Detroit. So you guys fight. I mean, those, those, probably, those states probably fight a one, lot. One time. One time. Wow. Wow. Um, we, you know, we interviewed uh, Jackie Callen uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, she's great, man. She's great. And I know that she was your publicist, still is, correct? Yes. Um, yeah, she is. She is great. You know, who's, uh, who's watching, by the way, uh, a lot. Michael Lajadez is in the room watching right now. Big up to him, who you also <laughs> fought. Michael. Big <laughs> up. Hello, Michael. I like <laughs> thing. You know, man, Michael. And, you know, I signed, with, I, I signed with the biggest deal in my career, of my career, with a company by the name of Virgil F Fight Unlimited. Okay. V VFW is a, t a technology company that give, give me the opportunity to be immoral, immortal, and fight forever. I'm be, I'm be here to fight forever. I'm, if you if you know what I mean by being immortal, I'm be, I, you can't deal with me. I'm, I'm immortal. You already can't deal with me as, 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 the, as, as a human. But immoral, you're going to be a touch me. That's, that's true. That's absolutely true. Um, that's totally true. So, How come... I'm sorry. What, how come you and Pryor never fought as a pro? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, I ain't no joke, man. <laughs> I never was a joke. <laughs> me and Pryor, me and Pryor, we liked each other, man. We got along together, together. But as far as fighting together, I think once was enough. You think <laughs> So he didn't want to do it? I think I, once was enough. Well, the people who are asking questions the, you know, the, the Aaron Price name keeps coming up and up and up. So I was, I want to figure out what the heck they're talking about. No, absolutely. Um, so Tommy, do you watch current boxing now? Do you follow it? I try, I try, I try to keep up with it a little bit. And who, who of the current guys stands out to you? Who do you like? The the heavyweight just fought. Um, was it for Wilder and um, Fury. um Wilder and um, Fury. Yeah, for real, Tyson Fury, yeah. It was a good fight. It was a good, very good fight. I thought so. I thought, I thought Wilder should have, should have won the fight a little bit more to win the fight. Yeah, he could have. Um, uh, here's a random question, but what would have happened if you fought in your prime Floyd Mayweather? Uh, Floyd a good fight, man. I think in my prime, man, we get four, four million. I think it was a, a very great fight between the two of us. So I, I can't say, but for a slick guy, man, real slick guy. I think it was a, a very exciting fight. I think, I think the world would love to see us fight, fight each other and do, and do a good job. Hey, so I, I, can, I can pick a winner. I won't pick a winner, but I know it would be a good fight. Well, I got a lot of people joining in saying, that uh, you would murder Mayweather. Um, you know, <clears throat> you guys think... me about this fight. It's gonna be on virtual reality, uh, virtual reality mm -hmm. tour. Now you can see it when you when on VFW can make it all make that all happen. Mm -hmm. so, all right. I will put my money on you because the height is just too overwhelming, in my opinion. I mean. You you had that size, which at, at forty seven. If you guys met at forty seven, it'd be very hard for Floyd to, you know, to get in. You know what I mean? Even yeah, we know. I th I think that. Well, I know I know it's been very difficult for him because I always make it difficult for for people to get to me and try to hit me in my face or hit me at all because no one wants to be hit. I definitely don't want to be hit. I want to do all. You want to do all the hitting. I get it. I'm the same way. <laughs> it's much better that way. 
Hey, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So Go who, is there any fighter in history that you would have wanted to fight if you could? Any era? Um, no, I don't think nobody, nobody in here wanted to fight me that I could afford. That I could afford. Um, okay. Everybody, everybody out there, I did fight. So I, I don't have regrets. I meant like, so there's nobody that, you know, you wish you could have fought in a different era, just just like a fantasy matchup? No, nah, I don't think so. I, 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 first reality fight, it may happen. I might get a chance to fight somebody that I can want to make, see out there that I, I, a perfect thing I can beat. And in virtuality, I can fight them. And probably so, and beat them. What, and beat. what is this virtual reality? What is that exactly? That's the new thing. It's, it's about to happen pretty soon now. Virtual, I mean, it's virtuality where you, you think about a fight that you may want to fight, and you get a chance to fight him on hologram with a hologram. Oh. Wow. So know what fight I would like to see? Yeah. Hearns versus Shane Mosley. Who is that? Tommy Hearns versus Shane Mosley. Me and Shane's friend. Man. <laughs> I, 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 I've been since I was seven years old. Shane Mosley is a good friend, man. I like, I like Shane. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him my whole life. That's my man. Tell Shane I say hello, please. Well, definitely. When I time I see him, I will. Is it good? I, um, <laughs> for me personally, the, one of the most impressive victories, in my opinion, for you was when you beat Virgil Hill, because it's a naturally bigger man. You know, he was the top dog at light heavyweight, and you know, you coming from welter, and then beating a seventy-five pounder to me was just amazing. I mean, was that really special for you as well? Well, it was. It was. It was, it was different because. Go up to that weight, trying to to fight a person at that and when that wasn't that wasn't that, wasn't that heavy. I only weighed about sixty seven, sixty eight, maybe seventy pounds, and I went up there and fought Virgil, and it was it was a good it was a good fight for me. It was a good time for me because what happened was I fell into everything. And I started, when, I, when I fell, in, I just. I, I just got out there and got out there and started fighting. Everything just came came together. Everything just fell right together for me. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's you know it 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 it's a testament to your power and your skill that you know somebody who started off fighting at you said you were twenty five, right? One twenty five. Yeah, one twenty five. Can move up to one seventy five and still have that same devastating power. I mean, that's that's very special, very unique. Well, it's something. It was something that. I, I I worked on all the time when I was in the gym. I work on my ability, my punching ability. I work on my boxing ability. When I put them both together, it's harder for an opponent to deal with that because they got to deal with two aspects. They got to deal with the boxing and they got to deal with the punching. And right. I'm going to give them both. If you, if you can't deal with the boxing, I'm going to box you all night. If you can't deal with the punching, I'm definitely gonna put you to sleep. You it, was there anything you did to to cre uh, increase your power? To, to sh I learned how to, I learned how to put the weight behind the punches. Mm. Punch with the weight. That's let all the, hips. That's all let, hips. Let the weight be determined. Let the man make his mind. You, you want to stay or you want to go? Mm. So so at the end of the day, you ended up, and I could be wrong, sixty-one wins. Five losses and 48 knockouts? 52 knockouts. 52 knockouts. 52. Wow. wow. And, you know, people watching, one of your losses was, you would, what, you twisted your knee, right? I twisted my leg. And, and they stopped it, but, you know, that was not a real, even though it's a loss on your record, it wasn't a real loss. Well, it counted, so it's a loss. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. But, you know, so when you had that first loss, was it really difficult to get your mindset back and to move forward? Did, or did you kind of bounce made, right back? It made me hungrier, even more hungrier. When I had the first loss, this can't be happening. I'm winning, and all of a sudden I got a lot. 
I got I to go back in and build it back, back up again. Wow. Because, you know, you, you started your career, if I'm not mistaken, 17 straight knockouts, right? Right, right. And that's kind of – what's up, Tarek? Uh, that's kind of what Deontay Wilder went through. He had a little more. But so some people, when they lose, you know, fighters, it, it's hard because you're like Superman. You know what I mean? You're knocking everybody out. Then when you lose, some people – so it's a real test on your, on your mental toughness. And, you know, you did have – a lot of mental toughness. Well, it was it came by me for a little bit, a little while, until I got back with things to get back out there and open it up again and then show people that what happened was a thing and not, not gonna happen again. And that's what I had to do. I, I, my fans, I had true fans that really believed in me and, and wanted to see me be successful. And I thank God for that, for, for all the people, all the people that, that really follow me, that, that wished me well and wanted to see me do well. Well, uh, well, well your first loss was watching back, or not. Let's give it a second. Freezing up, freezing up, freezing up, freezing up. I'm right here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All good. So, for people watching, your first loss was was to Leonard, um, but you know, in the rematch, you 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 handled them. You know, you did so much of a better job. I mean, you you really it seemed like you learned so much from that first loss. You know what I mean? And that's the name of the game, right? Learning and going forward. Right. And then, see, it kind of taught me when I lost against Leonard. It really kind of hurt me. It made me more serious. It made me want to get more seriously involved with the boxing and showing this man what kind of ability I really did have. He 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 didn't think I really had the ability, but I had to show that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely did. It was, you know, that that's that was an amazing fight. You know, um, did you ever contemplate trying to fight at heavyweight? No. <laughs> <laughs> cruiser, cruiser, cruiserweight, not heavyweight. Heavyweight would be out of the question because it's too much weight for me. It's way too much weight for me. I'm a little guy. It's a lot of weight. Question: We need to talk about the Roberto Duran fight. Do <laughs> Roberto is like one of my best friends now, man. Is he? he I've never met him. I'm sure he's a, a magnificent, wonderful man. He's a great fighter. He was he was he was scary to me when I was a kid watching him fight. I thought that he was one of the guys who scared me. Like, oh my god, I, he, you know, <clears throat> for whatever. Not like he did it. Just he when he bounce, his hair would his hair would bounce. He get hit, and uh, man, it was just it was really scary for me. But great fighter, and and <clears throat> and I know you guys have history. I'd like to know a little bit of that history. Well, Roberto, for me, Roberto's like one of my good friends in boxing. And we fought each other. And some damage was done, but, but mm. after the fight, we remained friends. We remained, remained good friends. And to, up to this day, today, we call each other and have fun talking to each other on the phone. No problem. You speak a little Spanish? I don't speak any Spanish. <laughs> Didn't think so. Did you um? Did you talk with Hagler much? I I spoke with Hagler maybe once or twice, maybe once or twice, maybe once, and we spoke a little bit. We we had we had a bigger conversation. Hi, right, Canada. Because Canada, you, you, Tommy Hearns. Um. So so you said you spoke to him a couple times. You were saying. Yeah, we we won we really won we we're, we're, we're a good time. We just we spoke and, and and we talked it over and um, that was it. Mm. Mm. What wow. what what fighters are you uh do you do you like to watch now? Not not too many fighters. I mean I I like all the fighters, don't get me wrong. I love all the fighters out of the day, but I just don't watch fight fight like I used to. Well yeah, yeah. Uh, neither. neither. So who who was was there any fighters that influenced you that were you that were your idols? Muhammad Ali. Was that the only one? The, the biggest one, the only one that really influenced me in the side boxer. 
You can't, you can't get better than that. I'm telling you, really. So it must have been pretty like surreal for you when you got to when you got to move around with him. Well, why why we got a chance to meet when I was in getting that box woman, man? I must have wet my pants. I don't know. I was <laughs> that 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 would seem so scary. It was scary. It was scary. <laughs> how about how, how can I box my my idol? It's my idol. How am I box him? Of course, I get that. But his energy when he stepped into the ring was probably just huge. And when he stepped in the ring, I wanted to step out the ring. <laughs> I would have too. I met Muhammad when I was a kid, and he he was the nicest man I'd ever met to this day in my life. And I'm almost he's years nice. old. He was the nicest big man you ever want to meet. Ever, 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 ever. He said hello to everybody. From a bum yeah. on the street to the president of the United States, he treated everybody the same. Yeah. Great. Yeah, does. So these days, uh, what do you do? What do you do? Like, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true, that you're a reserve police officer in Detroit. Is that true? I used to be. Not no more. I used to be a reserve police officer. I did it for a while. I enjoyed it for a few years. And I stopped doing it. So, like, what's what's that mean? Would you, like, go on the – would you, like, work the street? Like, what would you do? I was reserve police. I did everything the police officer would do. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you, so – Yeah, right. you went through the – you went through a version of the academy. You went through a version of the academy and learned learned some laws in the business. I, I had to go to the academy first before I did that. I had to go to the academy. Mm. Uh, how how many weeks or months was the academy? I went to the academy for, for about five six months. Wow. Yeah. I had a lot. All right, man. They'll, they'll put you out of the street. For, for, there ain't no game out here, especially in Detroit, man. I know. I, I, I used to, to, I used to uh, live in Detroit. Trust me, I know. That's great. So, so uh, let, let, I guess we should wrap it up. Cause I think you got something else um, on your schedule. But what do you do these days? These days, I just hang around my family, stay with my family, and try to just stay, stay around and try to. Try to help them out as much as I possibly can. I do. I do a little, little bit of jump rope, a little bit of workout. But you know, I'm gonna tell you and I'm tell a lot of people. I'm seriously thinking about doing something with the and boxing again real soon. Like getting in the ring, you mean? Yeah. Oh, really? don't hurt him, Tommy. Don't hurt him. No, don't no, do no. You, you know what? God has blessed me with all this ability. I'm sitting around here, want to do something, and can't do it because I, I'm, I'm afraid to, to step out there to let people know that's what I really want to do. But it's what I really want to do. Well, well, you know what? More power I, to would, you. I would be, I would be honored to move around with you and do an exhibition whenever and where you want. But you better make your mind because I ain't no joke. <laughs> Don't don't get me twisted. I ain't no joke either. Hey, you uh, about me. I'm, my name is Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> my name um, is Dad. Uh, well, then we, my we, kids call me. <laughs> Listen, remember you said that. You remember you hey, said. That. I don't. I don't stutter. I, I'm telling you, man. If if if, uh, if if you would be willing to move around with me, I would move around with you, no problem. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you back and get you and see what's happening with you. All right? Yeah, no, I, I, man. I do. We, 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 we're gonna make it happen. Let's do it. It sounds it sounds like a lot of fun to me. Thank you. Hey, we, God bless. You. Talk to us, Tommy. Thank you so much, man. And let's do it again. All right, good. I mean, thank you. you. Thanks yeah, again. Hey guys, please subscribe and smash that like button. And if there's any fighters you want us to interview or anything else, any questions or comments, hit us up. We're here for you.